So I've been working on this sailboat. It's a Tayana 55 and it's from 1984, right Shelly? Yeah. 1984. And it was in pretty bad shape. Nobody took care of it for a long time and at least maybe fixed it. So when I came along, I was like, oh, I gotta have a big boat. Oh, I, I didn't know how much work was involved. But I bought the boat for 115 grand and these boats go for like 250, 350. So it's just a lot of, a lot of labor of love that goes into it. So the engine needed a whole new heat exchanger and you can't get those heat exchangers anymore. So you had to buy a kit that was from this place called, uh, what's it called? Transatlantic Diesel. Transatlantic Diesel. And it costs like five, six grand for that kit. And it used to, when you started it up, when the old heat exchanger was on there, it would blow white smoke. I mean, a big, like a cloud of it. Look at all that And smoke. so Why I said, okay, so let's change the heat, the heat exchanger. There's a tube that runs through it. And where the caps on each side, it was just all corroded away. There was, it was no good because the aluminum had got eaten away. And so I replaced it. Now you put antifreeze in. It doesn't make a white cloud anymore, but you put antifreeze in the system. It keeps going somewhere and it's not leaking anywhere. So it's got to be going out the exhaust some way. So Transatlantic Diesel told me to put this kit right here I got from Napa. You give them 150 bucks, you rent the tool, it's free, you take it back, you get your 150 bucks back. So, so here's the kit. And then here's the adapters. This one, too, bit, too small. So when this goes on like this, this goes here, and then this goes on here. You can spin this like this. And the more you spin it, the more that spreads out and it makes a tight, airtight fit. None of the adapters work. So this is not going to work. So what I did, I went and got this. Where's the box? I went and got this. It is from Napa. It's like 35 bucks. This, you run the motor and you put that in the hole like this. You fill this with fluid up to here. And then as the motor's running, if there's gas is leaking through the head gasket into this, into the antifreeze ports and stuff, then you go like this and this sucks. This will suck air up in through this tube and through that fluid. And you just keep doing that for like a minute or two. And if the test fluid changes colors to yellow, you know you got exhaust going into it. And look, look, when I pump that, antifreeze came up in there. So now I have to take and wash this all totally out and you have to drop that antifreeze down to where when you go like this, all you're doing is sucking air up through there and not antifreeze or you gotta start all over again. So here's like a little pump that I made for fuel and it can draw fuel out of a tank and you can put it in cans and stuff. So I'm just gonna use it for the antifreeze. And then, because I'm just, I'm not trying to keep it. So I just stick that in there. And then, tell me, Shelly. Let's see. Is that... Hold on. Let me hook it up. Yeah, see, that's, there it is. There's antifreeze coming out. So I got to suck some of that antifreeze out or it won't suck up into that tube. All right, so there's the tube. Let's put it back in there and suck air up 
and see if it draws the antifreeze back up into the tube. I don't think it is going to. I don't think it's going to. Yeah, it's not. It's not. So, now let's go start this motor up. All right, so there's the exhaust right there. So Shelly's going to start the motor up, and let's see. I'll show you guys. It doesn't smoke. Look, she fired right up. Let's see how much... Let's see. you seen how much it was smoking. And this thing hasn't started up for about a month. So this test means a lot. So now you have to let the motor run until the thermostat opens up to where the fluid, the antifreeze is flowing all the way through the motor. So let's go, let's give it a minute to heat up and uh, test it. Cause this, I'm telling you, this is, if this test goes bad, I'm spending three, four grand. So you see that milky stuff in the water? I don't know what that is. It, I don't think it's, I don't think it's fuel. I think it's antifreeze, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll do the test. We'll find out. The on the deck work right here. You see from there up to here. That's using a flat disc pad on a grinder, and that took one day. And that's fiber refiber glass in the spot where the windlass goes. So I'm think I'm thinking one day, two days for that, another day over there, another day over there, so that's three. Then in the back, four, five, just add two more days. So I'm thinking seven days to grind all this down to where you can put a fresh layer of fiberglass over the top of this to cover up all these holes to keep it from cracking. The holes from cracking. Because look at them all. Look at all the holes. I don't trust the epoxy. So I'm going to put a layer of 1708 with West Systems over the top of this whole deck and then paint it and be done with it. I don't see a change. I mean, I see it's lighter, but it doesn't look green or yellow. It's supposed to turn yellow. So I think we passed the test. So I don't know what the problem is. Look how blue that is. There's no hints of green or yellow. So there's no exhaust gases getting pushed, pushed through the head gasket into the cooling system. So there's the oil. Look. You see how clean that oil is? There's no water in that oil. So it's not, it's not getting in the oil. I don't know what the problem is why it's losing antifreeze or the antifreeze is dropping it's not the head gasket so I'm gonna move on and think about it some more but we're in the yard let's go take a look at a boat that probably been sitting up here for 20 years 
and the interior I think is pretty good shape. I ain't for sure, but we'll, we'll go look at it. But look, here's a, a, 19, a, a Super Maramu from 1992. It's an older one sitting up here. It's not for sale. Somebody's boat, they're storing it here. All right, so here's the boat. Now this, bo <laughs> this boat, so it's been sitting here like 20 years or so. And I don't even know the name of the boat. I don't even know if it had, it maybe was made in a shipyard and it, there, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe when we go inside, we'll find something that a placard or something tells what it is. I would say this boat is around a 40, 40, 45 foot boat, 40 foot. But there's some issues going on with this boat. This boat's been sitting here for at least 20 years. And you could probably get this boat if you came up here and said, hey, I'll pay you $4,000 for marina fees. And then you come up here and work on the boat. You probably get this boat for free. You might have to pay, like I said, on the other boats, 500 bucks just for them to feel like they sold it. So there's the keel and it's, it's, and then this is wood. And to me, it looks like mahogany. That's what it looks like, or, or teak or one of the two. And then, but look, it's, it, you would have to, it needs to be cut up. It needs to be cut and you need to go up to the water line cut off cut off all this fiberglass pull it off check fix all the wood and then re cover it up with fiberglass the hole with maybe three or four coats of west systems epoxy and 1708 or something and so let's go inside go check it out and you, you'd have to take the keel off that'd be the first thing you'd have to lift the boat up a little bit drop the keel and really check out how the, all the wood framing and stuff is if it's still intact and fix the places that need to be fixed if it's even possible i don't know i've never been in i've never looked that's why there's plastic on it you guys see that cabin top just looks pretty good so i guess there's a tiller there's a tiller arm there and then there's a way to steer the boat up front, I think, in the in the cockpit. But look at that cockpit cover. Let's go. Look how nostalgic this boat is. So it's it's all it's a wood boat. It's a wood boat that's been skinned on the outside with a layer or two of fiberglass. But when I walked around on these decks, these decks are all fiberglassed. So when I walked around on them, it's it's like a thick layer of fiberglass on these decks. Seems pretty solid. So, but look at it. So it's like a place to steer, and it's got like a it's it's pretty. I like it. It's cool. Man, you better bring your britches, cause that's a lot of work. This is a lot of work. So let's go down below. Let's go down below and see what's going on. It's a catch rig. So you got. One up front, and you got another mast back here in the back. And right here, look, you got some old big winches that are probably froze. I don't know if they're froze up, but they're good size winches. Those look like 65s to me. And if You can't really get up there. Let me see. Let me see that phone. You can't really get up onto the deck. But there's the mast. And it's an aluminum mast and aluminum boot. So I don't think you're gonna have an issue. I mean look at the you got I don't think there's that big an issue with the with the deck. Let's go below. Come on. 
All right, so there's my view from coming down through the cockpit. And let me tell you, it's musky in here. So if you decided to come take on this boat and you didn't have anywhere to stay, I suggest you bring about $200 worth of some kind of mold kill and spray before you could even, even think about being in here and staying in here. So there's the bow and there's the chain locker. And then as you come back from the bow, there's a bathroom. And look, it's everywhere is wood. This thing is built out of wood. And there's like a shower. And then there's a set of bunk beds right there. And the floor seems to be like metal or something or thin thin steel I don't know I gotta it's weird and then here's coming back into the front room so there's the front room see it ain't no little boat she's pretty fat and then as you walk to this side there's I think there's another bathroom in here Yep, there's another bathroom. This is a project where you need seven boys. <laughs> and that's what you need. Like a family that was looking to do something crazy. And then this is where the kitchen, I guess, used to be. Something's missing. But look see if you can see you now you can't really see in there there's wood you can see the hole and that wood looks like it's pretty good shape i don't think there's really that big an issue with the wood maybe down below but there's some it's it leaks it's leaking i found leak spots so when you look up in there i you can't see it's dark but there it's leaking so some of the where the beams are so it's the water's getting into onto the beams of the boat. And here's the engine room. We'll take a look at that engine from the outside because under the cockpit there's a door that you can lift up and you can get you can see the engine. And then here's the back mast in the back of the boat so i i'm guessing if you open those that is where i don't know what that is yeah that's the that's the probably where, that's where the rudder quadrant is we can see that kind of stuff from on the deck and look at all these charts Look at them all. This boat has been around. And somebody, I don't know what happened. I don't know the story of this boat. But look at them all. Just stacks and stacks of, of charts from all over. What well, this one is... I don't know. Trinidad. So Caribbean, I bet there's a, I bet the whole world is in these charts. But you can see, if you look, you can't see in there, but I can. If you look up in there, there's wooden frames that run down alongside that boat. There's water penetrating in from the deck and getting on those frames. So that's the issue that I would be worried about. If I was looking to restore this boat. And look. Look at that little toilet. And then some kind of weird. Old. 
What is that? Is that? That's, yeah, that's just one, you know, something that was in your grandma's house back in 1950 or 60. All right, so we've seen enough. Let's go up top, look down at the motor, and look at the rudder quadrant, and check those two out. Well, look. There's the... the old electrical box and chart table. And look, there's an old heart interface converter. So there's a, you, the charting system might be working on this boat with new batteries. But look at this, look how cool those steps are that go up. It's beautiful. What a nostalgic old boat. So let's go on up and look at the engine. So there's the floor of the cockpit up and it gives you access to the motor. See, there's the, there's where the, you would steer. And then there's the floor of the cockpit. And there's the motor. I think it's a Perkins four cylinder. And I went down there on the side and the heat exchanger has been frozen and busted. So that's not good. It's not a good sign. But what makes me think it's a Perkins is right there on the panel. So let's go check a look at the rudder quadrant and see what kind of shape it's in. So there's the hole to the back of the boat. And it's, it's pretty cool. Look, it's got a steering right there for the back and then there's the where the rudder quadrant would be and it's got a place for storage and then you can see right down there I can't see the quadrant I'd have to go down there and just move all kinds of stuff out of the way but I think it's in good shape I think it just needs greased up and cleaned up and maybe the cables replaced one last thing to look at, and it's these turnbuckles. So the, the rigging looks like it's in pretty good shape. It, I mean, it's, it's really old, but it's, the turnbuckles look nice and shiny. The, you know, you'd have to, if you were really interested in this boat, you'd have to come check this, you'd have to check these chain plates, each one is. And you'd have to go down below and remove all the floorboards, take a screwdriver, and go around and poke at everywhere where the beams are to see what you're getting yourself into. So this is not a, you know, you really have to cross your T's and dot your I's. Is that how it goes? Yeah. Before you really wanted to jump in on this boat. So that's the video. I just thought it was a nice, beautiful, old, nostalgic boat. I think she deserves a new life. Hopefully, maybe some guy will come along and see it, too. 